The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, as Jesus said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you, and the breasts at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, when you listen to a text like this, one might feel that Jesus is disrespecting his mother. In fact, he is not. He is bringing her into prominence because our relationship with the divine, with God, are not based because of who we are biologically whether we are of this group, that group, where we are born, whose children we are, all that does not matter. Gender, social divide, ethnic groups, everyone is a child of God. In what way does Jesus bring his mother into prominence? by finding in her that she has done the right thing. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to thy word. He is the one who had said that. And what Jesus is saying today in the gospel is precisely that. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And he knows he is standing there because she kept the word. The representational role that Jesus gives Mary, his mother, in today's gospel is heightened as time passes and we see that role clearly depicted, for example, in the fourth gospel. If you remember the wedding at Cana, when the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus came to Jesus and said, they have no wine. And we know, we know the traditional response which we have heard pretty often. Woman, what is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. Well, that's what we have been hearing. But in the Eastern Church, St. Ephraim, St. Theodore of Suestia, and many others, the reading is not like that. The first question, see, the way we translate the Greek, what do you and to me can be said roughly, or it can be said, what do you and to me? And then you have a glance from Mary towards him, a couple. And Jesus says, isn't this my hour? Rather than, my hour has not yet come. Because in Greek, there were no full stops, no question marks in the scripto continua as you read it. And therefore, the question could be easily missed, which has been picked up by the Eastern Fathers. So actually, Mary comes to him, they have no wine, and he says, to you and to me. But a glance from him to something. Are you trying to tell me that my hour begins now? Isn't this my hour? Is that it? And a nod from her. And next she tells the servants, do whatever he tells you. That is corroborated 17 chapters hence in chapter 19, 
verses 25 to 27, as, as the mother of Jesus and the beloved disciple are there at the foot of the cross. And what happens there? What began here, the hour, it is accomplished just before Jesus breathes his last. It is accomplished. It is finished. Before he can say that, he tells, looking at his mother, Behold your woman, behold your son. Woman, behold your son. And looking at the beloved disciple, he says, Behold your son mother. Both in the story of the wine, water changed into wine, yet called his mother, woman, what is that to you and to me? Here, woman, behold your son. What do we gather from this? He has made his mother into a representative of humanity. She is the one who awaits the messianic blessings which are abundant in the story of the water change into wine. Not just the quantity of it, the sheer quantity of over 900 bottles of wine, and not the quality of kept the good wine until now. And now, as the hour is accomplished, the hour of death of Jesus is the hour of his glorification in the fourth gospel, he entrusts the beloved disciple into her care. Woman, behold your son. Look after your son. Of course, the church has interpreted woman as referring to the church. And therefore, Mary stands for the church, a representational role. And each one of us, are represented by the beloved disciple who look on this woman, who look on this woman, the church, with great love and care. Dear brothers and sisters, I believe my own relationship with our Blessed Mother has been uh, growing very, very gradually. But I believe also that uh, it is in this woman that you recognize what she has done. At Christmas, she looks down at the babe with great love. And now with the same love, she looks up at the cross. And she has fulfilled the word of God. And therefore, far from disrespect, Jesus in this gospel is putting her in a place of prominence. We are called to do the word of God. We ask the spirit of God. Sometimes we know it is difficult, but then when the spirit inspires and the spirit accompanies us, everything becomes easy. We begin to see what God is really asking of us. May the spirit of God do to us exactly as he blessed Mary, bless us as well. Amen.